just like a bomb went off. I wanted to die. Because I just lost everything. Everything. through a lifetime of memories blown away in just a few seconds of mother nature's fury it is a scene painfully familiar to most of us because tornadoes strike more frequently here in the central united states than anywhere else in the world on average over 600 times a year spawned by thunderstorms tornadoes are the most violent winds on earth it was just black and i you could you could feel it you couldn't see it you could feel it the ground was shaking it's ter terrible. You get the loudest thing you've ever heard. Good evening. I'm Tom Skilling, and in the next 30 minutes, we'll show you dramatic tornado video, some of it never before seen on television, much of it shot on home video cameras. We'll explode myths on tornadoes and give you pointers on how you can spot these deadly storms. And we'll explore a new weather radar system that in a matter of years may dramatically improve tornado warnings. August 28th, 1990, a blistering hot afternoon and a tragic piece of northern Illinois weather history is about to unfold from this thunderstorm moving through Rockford, Illinois. The National Weather Service issues a severe thunderstorm watch. Then a spotter reports a small tornado touchdown near Pecatonica. Shortly after 3 o'clock, a second and much larger funnel emerges and begins a deadly 16-mile sweep from Oswego through Crest Hill, Plainfield, and finally Joliet. It just come in and come out, nobody seen the funnels, we had no warning or anything. The tornado killed 29 people and injured over 350. University of Chicago scientists took only a day to conclude that it was the most powerful August tornado to ever strike the United States. It was never photographed, but another tornado of nearly comparable strength near Heston, Kansas, just a few months before, illustrates the destructive efficiency of a Plainfield-type tornado in progress. like a typical tornado. It might have looked more like this Oklahoma twister, captured by storm-chasing scientists who literally drove right into the edge of the storm. Rain or hail curtains wrapping extremely rapidly right at 1130, right ahead of us, and very dark ahead. And maybe we'll have better visibility in just a second. We're driving into a strong mesocyclone. Okay, now be real careful, Neil. Slow down. This would be where we drive right into the tornado, so be very, very careful. CG. Rapid circulation, right overhead. Slow down, Neil. Stop. Rapid circulation. About one half. Debris. Yes. Debris. Yes. Tornado. Passing right in front of us. Oh, my God. Got it right at us. I got it. I got it on video. When we think of a tornado, this is what usually comes to mind. The fact is, these storms take on many forms. Some tornadoes are nearly invisible, marked only by swirling debris at the base of the funnel. Others may be composed almost entirely of windblown dust. Some are thin, some are huge, like this one, which is composed of a series of smaller funnels, each capable of inflicting tremendous damage. One thing they all have in common, though, is that they strike with incredible speed. An amateur photographer was shooting what he thought was an unusual hailstorm on the Mississippi River last year near the Quad Cities. Winds were so light that fog was developing across his tree-lined property. Then an immense wall cloud appears. Less than a minute later, debris is seen flying through the air behind the trees. A tornado is about to strike. We're superimposing a clock to illustrate just how fast a tornado's devastating work can take place. Watch and listen. In 
20 seconds, the house is in ruins. Wait, wait, don't go. Despite warnings from his wife, and with his camera still rolling, the homeowner goes upstairs to check out the damage. The destruction is overwhelming. A lush, tree-filled lot near the Mississippi River was, in less than half a minute, reduced to a pile of twisted debris. Here's how a tornado begins. A thunderstorm develops. Its intricate workings are revealed by this unique supercomputer model at the University of Illinois. Twisting and violent wind patterns swirl upward through the rear of the developing storm. Weightless computer-generated balls mark the thunderstorm's strongest updraft. It is under these updrafts where tornadoes spring to life. For all the attention they receive, it is important to know that out of the 50,000 thunderstorms that develop on Earth each day, less than 1% of them will ever produce tornadoes. Yet when they do occur, they are the most violent winds on Earth. Wind speeds can reach as high as 320 miles per hour. Oh man, that thing is coming. Look at that, look at the tower go. Did you see the tower? A sometimes cruel conspiracy of geography and weather make April, May, and June primetime in the Midwest for tornado strikes. Dr. Ted Fujita, a weather researcher at the University of Chicago, has developed detailed maps of tornado touchdowns. They reveal several so-called tornado alleys in the Chicago area. These alleys are corridors of frequent tornado strikes. In the 1970s and early 80s, the Aurora O'Hare Evanston zone was active. But Fujita says since 1984, a new tornado alley has developed through the Joliet-Will County area. Four out of the five strongest Chicago area tornadoes in recent years have occurred within 15 miles of Joliet. New alleys may still form. The existing alley could change. Their placement is not totally understood. Another problem facing Chicago forecasters is that the Northern Illinois tornado is unique, far different from its Plain State's counterpart. Our tornadoes are generally a lot uh, shorter lived than smaller. It makes the warning system very difficult because by the time we get word of one or, or locate one and put out a warning, it's probably gone. They don't last very long. Coming up, does Lake Michigan protect downtown Chicago from tornadoes? We'll separate myths from facts when we return. It sounded like a freight train. It's spectacular. This is spectacular. We have debris thousands of feet in the air. There are flash fires on all the uh, high-tension wires. We're about three-quarters of a mile from the actual touchdown at this time. These vivid pictures of a tornado touchdown were shot over Minneapolis in 1985 by a television news crew. It is considered one of the best tornado-in-progress sequences ever photographed. Here, the tornado sweeps up trees like a vacuum. The flashes you see are power lines being destroyed by the twister. Pictures like these are helping scientists better understand the inner workings of a twister. Even though our knowledge about tornadoes has grown tremendously over the past 15 years, some tornado myths just refuse to die. Let's test your tornado knowledge. True or false, skyscrapers in downtown Chicago disrupt tornadoes. False. The winds of a tornado can reach more than 40,000 feet above the ground. Buildings are a mere nuisance to such a huge circulation and are not a deterrent. Lake Michigan protects downtown Chicago from tornadoes. That's false. The lake might be a factor on certain occasions, but probably more important is that heat generated in the downtown area can weaken potential tornadoes. This is a laboratory tornado created by Dr. Fujita. He places red-hot coils underneath the funnel to mimic the city's heat. As you can see, the rising heat substantially weakens the tornado's circulation. Open windows before a tornado strike to prevent a building from exploding. That's false. Buildings are destroyed by sheer wind power, not by a change in air pressure. Besides, buildings leak, equalizing air pressure naturally. Opening windows does nothing to prevent damage from a tornado. Go to the southwest corner of the basement. That's false. 
The center of the basement under a heavy workbench or table offers the best protection. Studies show debris often collects in the corners. Well, it sounds like a vacuum cleaner and a freight train at the same time. It sounded like it was a boom and it was gone. Just like a roaring train coming through. There is no other way I can describe the noise. It's often heard tornadoes sound like a freight train. That's true. Rushing air will usually make a loud noise, but any strong wind can sound the same way. Weather forecasters can pinpoint the exact area where a tornado will strike. While forecasters can predict the general area of tornado development, we simply can't predict exactly where a tornado might actually touch down. When the tornado hit Will County, the area was under a severe thunderstorm watch issued by the National Weather Service several hours earlier. That watch was issued here at the National Severe Storms Forecast Center in Kansas City, Missouri. We occasionally, with a severe thunderstorm watch, will get a tornado, and that happened, obviously it happened at Plainfield. Yes. Most of the time with a severe thunderstorm watch, uh, tornadoes do not happen, but it's, you know, far from a perfect system. The Storm Center monitors severe weather developing across the country, year-round, 24 hours a day. When the Storm Center issues a weather watch, severe weather occurs in the watch area almost 85% of the time. After the Plainfield tornado, forecasters painstakingly reviewed the weather events of that tragic day. Well, obviously the first thought is, I, you know, I wish we had a tornado watch out. And we go back and we look at it. We do, you know, a real detailed kind of a post-mortem on it. And uh, the more you look at that situation, the more you say to yourself, well, I don't see how the forecaster could have done anything different. The problem is tornadoes in meteorological terms are relatively small weather events. They are often hidden in giant storms, which are photographed from hundreds of miles away. But some major changes are on the way. Ongoing research here in Norman, Oklahoma, since the 1970s is making possible the next generation weather radar known as NEXRAD, a Doppler radar, a radar that will scan the skies across the United States, offering us the ability to put out warnings in a much more timely fashion. At the heart of this system is the wind-detecting Doppler radar, which is now operating in the Oklahoma City National Weather Service forecast office. Detailed information on wind speed and direction from Doppler signals is displayed as an array of colors on a computer screen. We've already experienced um, great improvement in forecasting during the test mode with the system. Uh, in 1989, as a matter of fact, we were able to achieve, um, while not quantum leaps, certain improvements on a prototype system. Doppler radar systems will be installed nationwide as part of a sweeping reorganization of the National Weather Service. Forecasters will have at their fingertips information which will help them issue warnings and watches more quickly and more efficiently. We've been observing this storm as it comes toward us. This circulation has been increasing. The reflectivity structure looks like the, the structure we come to expect with the supercell storm. There is now a precomposed message. Uh, in the editor, I can make a couple of additional changes in here, and that's it. It's out. The warning is gone, and that's uh, considerably uh, less than uh, a minute and a half or two minutes from the time I made the decision that I wanted to put out a tornado warning there. There's no question that the technology we use to detect tornadoes is improving, and it will continue to do so. But the bottom line is, as fancy as all the gear is, ultimately it comes down to a very personal decision as to whether or not you're threatened by the storm that's moving into your area. Nobody will come around and ring your doorbell and tell you there's a tornado coming. You'll have to assess that for yourself. And there are ways to do that. Coming up, how you can protect yourself from a tornado. You guys get ready to hit that basement. Come right at it. Remember that. It's coming right at us. Get ready. There goes the sirens in Grand Island. Get going. Hit the basement. Grandson, that'll be three in another month. I just heard everything shatter, and I just kept the run, and I got to the basement. Me and Michael walked out of there without hardly a scratch, but my wife just got off of the deck part of our house and got onto the cement slab where we walk into the house and that's where I found her after the house was gone. Her and Matt was there but this flying debris went and hit Matthew in the head and killed him and cut off her finger so she's just lucky she's alive. So, so I guess three of us walked out of there alive out of four ain't too bad. The majority of people killed and injured by tornadoes are struck by flying debris. A tornado's winds are so strong that even the most harmless objects can be turned into deadly missiles. 
even though a formal warning may not be out, here is what you should look for when severe weather approaches. Large hail. Only the most powerful thunderstorms produce large hail. Tornadoes frequently emerge next to the hail-producing area of the storm. Hail can also make the sky look green. Tornadoes generally occur in the back of the thunderstorm. Notice the clearer skies in the background of this huge tornado, which was photographed moving across a farm field. Also, look for an approaching cloud of debris like this one captured just moments before the tornado moved through the area. Swirling debris may mark the location of a tornado, even though a funnel is not yet visible. See those papers flung through? That is a tornado. Look, look at all the papers over there. That's a tornado. Yeah, Lee. Yeah, but look, picking it up. Look at Dale. Here comes a tornado. Sure is. Look at all the papers. Got dark, start blowing, wind start blowing, hail about the side of a golf ball start coming down, and all of a sudden, boom. Here is a look at a sequence of events you might see as a tornado forms. First, an isolated lowering of the clouds in the rear southwest quadrant of the storm, a feature like this, something we call the wall cloud. This is the feature from which the tornado may develop. There it comes, there it comes. See it? Next, a funnel cloud appears to drop down from the clouds. Here, an amateur photographer captures clearly the beginning of a tornado touchdown. Condensation forms the vapor cloud, which marks the funnel. The tornado then takes off in the same direction as the thunderstorm. If you think a tornado might be coming your way, be prepared to move quickly. Get away from windows and head to the center of the basement. Try to get under a heavy workbench or table. Evacuate upper floors of homes. They're the first to go. A bathroom or interior closet are good alternatives to the basement. In high rises, move to the interior hallways or stairwells away from windows. Evacuate mobile homes and cars, and if caught in the open, lie flat, preferably in a ditch or ravine. The purpose of these tornado safety procedures is to cut exposure to blowing debris and to protect you if a building collapses. Next, we'll meet the tornado spotter who may have saved lives in the recent Lamont tornado touchdown. It's going down, ain't it? Let's go, let's go. Inside, inside, downstairs. Where's that at? There it goes. Inside, downstairs. Just the other side of Dean, I'd say. Could have called Dean. Well, I told him to watch it. It's too late now. It's coming this way. Ooh, look at the stuff below. Oh, my word. As Plainfield residents found out last year, experiencing a tornado's fury can be terrifying. It struck without warning. But that was not the case in Lamont recently. Warning sirens were activated moments before a tornado tore through this subdivision, thanks in large part to Police Sergeant Tom Hess. He spotted the funnel from a nearby hill. With the tornado passing over his car, he called out over his police radio, frantically telling the dispatcher to activate the alarms. Activating the sirens at that point, it gave the uh, citizens of Lamont uh, approximately two, three minutes to head for cover, and it's possible that that could have saved some lives by that, that amount of time. The people I have talked to uh, in the area of the devastation said as soon as they heard that siren go off, they headed for their basements, and no sooner they got to the last step of the basement, it hit. So it was very, to the, the sirens, a very big factor. It saved a lot of lives. There were no such spotters in Plainfield that fateful August day. Had warning sirens gone off, lives in Plainfield may have been saved. As Plainfield rebuilds, there are tragic lessons here. As if anybody doubted it, deadly tornadoes will strike again. Also, it's clear that our current warning system has limits. It's not perfect. Heaven knows we're trying, but weather forecasters simply can't promise advance warning for each and every tornado touchdown. The new Doppler radars, which are down the road, will help, but even they're not perfect. The ultimate responsibility falls on each of our shoulders to monitor the skies when severe weather approaches and have a definite, prearranged plan in mind when a tornado strikes. What we do in the precious few moments before a tornado's onslaught may literally mean the difference between life and death. 
all the trees, of course, were blasted into stubs and the bark was ripped off the trees. And uh, I remember about dawn, the birds started singing. That was really eerie. It was real strange. As you look up in these blasted trees and there'd be birds up there singing away. You know, and it just seemed like they shouldn't be singing up there in those trees. Yeah, it's a freight train they talk about. Yep. Yeah. There's stuff went up in the air where it's I know, at. I see it, Sam. I want to get as much as possible. Isn't that funny looking? Mm -hmm. I'd be going to miss the house here, but them little ones spawning off of it, you see there. Uh-huh. Yeah, but see how it's so calm? Mm -hmm. That's been on the ground a long time. Yeah. Hold that door open. Five minutes open. My God. Come up. You'll see it. Come on up now. 